Welcome back everybody to another video. I was midway done my missiles video, which is quite an extensive video. It goes into detail as to why missiles are, uh, you know, in a state that they're in in live and what the missile meta, you know, what the missile meta is. And, you know, mostly though, it's, it's a, it's a discussion about, you know, where missiles should go. And it's a, like I said, a long video, but I got to making that. And I thought to myself, you know what, we were talking about ballistics and I thought to myself, yeah, this we got to tackle this sooner rather than later. We need to have a discussion about ballistics. So, look, I am a big fan of diversity in combat. I love when things matter. I like when choices matter. I like when choices between systems. I like when choices between fighters. I like when choices between maneuvers make a big difference in a fight. And as it stands right now, in the live version of Star Citizen, ballistics are largely basically a thing of the past. Nobody really effectively runs ballistics, except for, and this is an exception, the Ion Inferno or the Starfighter Inferno, because it simply has no other gun to use. Um, I remember a time when ballistics used to be extremely damaging, but obviously their limited ammo count made it so that really high skill ceiling pilots were basically the only ones to effectively use ballistics. And although selfishly I really enjoyed that being a high skill ceiling pilot myself, what really came down to it was most people just stopped running ballistics. And as it stands right now, we have a temporary system in place in live which simulates the resistance to armor. So for example, uh, Anvil Hornet or an arrow has a 50% resistance to ballistic damage on its hull, which simulates a rudimentary armor system, which is not bad. I mean, it has a resistance profile, but it, regardless of the angle of velocity and speed at which the ballistic projectile hits the ship, it's just a blanket 50% no matter what's going on. This leads to two problems. One, with the current tuning of ballistics in live, you basically aren't doing any effective damage. You're only doing about half of what the damage of the ballistic is actually supposed to do. And considering lasers are infinite and ballistics have almost no ammo, a lot of times you basically only have enough ammo for one or maybe two kills, if that, and probably small stuff. So we're in a bit of a pickle when it comes to ballistics. Personally, I love them. I think they're some of the best parts of combat, and they used to be a whole lot more fun until the rudimentary armor system came in. But obviously, in mash modes, as you're seeing here, ballistics are making a little bit of a comeback. We have a significantly higher ammo cap for ballistics, which is important because if I'm going to use ballistics, I need to have enough bullets to make the kill. But it got me thinking. Currently, ballistics have penetration, which means when I fire my ballistics through the shields, 10% of the energy is lost or 10% is lost in its DPS. And then 50 or 40%, depending on the ship, is lost to the quote unquote armor that's being fired on. So in reality, only 40% of my damage of ballistics are actually making it to the target, which means it's faster for me to shoot the shields down with lasers and then shoot with lasers because lasers don't have the debuff that comes with ballistics. The armor has no effect or has very little effect. I think it's like 10% for lasers. So you're almost getting 100% of your DPS from lasers. So when you really do the math and you sit down and think about it, you're actually faster killing your opponent with full lasers than you are with a mixed laser ballistic loadout. The only advantage that you get with ballistics is at certain points during the fight, you have a little bit of damage penetrating the shields and applying to the target. In my personal opinion, I think that gameplay is not fun. I like the idea where we have shields as an all stop, which means if your shields are up, 100% of the damage applied to your ship is stopped. What I would like to see and this is, again, my personal opinion, guys, is ballistics being really effective against ships when the shields are down and much less effective against regular shields and lasers being a great system for knocking shields down and ballistics again for the hull. This causes mixed loadouts to actually have a purpose 
because the time to kill is lower with a mixed loadout because lasers are faster at dropping the shields and ballistics are much better at effectively killing the target once the shields are down. This adds dynamics to the gameplay. This adds loadout choices. Some ships like Hornets will have much more of a purpose because they have more gun hardpoints. Smaller ships like M50s or Gladiuses have much less hardpoints, so you're going to have to be very careful with which weapons you choose to bring to the field and how effective you feel like you're going to be overall. With higher ammo counts, staying in the fight with ballistics will make more of a like it'll make more sense. Having one or two kills worth of ballistics and then going back to reload basically sucks a lot of the fun out of the dogfight. But this is just my opinion. I think we can get there. I think with master modes it's starting to feel a lot better for ballistics, but I feel strongly that ballistics need to make a choice. Are we going to stay with shield penetration? And in my opinion, is that a good thing? I like the idea that if shield penetration is 100% zero, or sorry, not 100% zero, but if shield penetration is gone, I think that's better for the game in general. Because the idea of chip damaging is, in my opinion, quite frustrating. Now, you could argue that shields could have a higher or lower chance of penetrating ballistics, and you could have a different mechanic there. But my philosophy is, if your shields are up, you should be safe. I'd rather have much less shielding that's 100% safe than a bunch of shielding, which essentially doesn't do anything because you're going to take chip damage anyway. With the, you know, with the upcoming uh, flak cannons and stuff that I'm hoping you know, CIG puts in, I know that some people have talked about it, and this is, again, this is me speculating. I don't know for sure if flak's ever going to get put in, but I think I remember something about uh, one of the devs in CitizenCon talking about the future maybe coming with flak, which, in my opinion, would be pretty awesome. But what do you guys think? Do you feel like ballistics should have penetration on shields? Or they should be a better weapon system for penetrating the armor on a ship when the shields are down. Because if you were to think about this, like, just stay with me here for a second. If you're in a heavy fighter, or you're in something, um, I guess you could say, a little larger. And you're in the persistent universe, and a small gang of, I guess you could say, maybe lights or medium fighters show up. And they target a subsystem on your ship. And let's say you have the best shields in the game. You've got, you know, 5,000 points in shields. You know that you can survive a decent amount of time before maybe you get taken down. But all of a sudden, a few passes go by, ballistics penetrate your shields, and a system gets knocked out, and you're basically out of the fight before it even begins. I, f I feel personally like just having penetration, I think, not lowers the skill ceiling, but I just feel like it doesn't feel as good. I mean, take games like, I use this all the time, but Star Wars Squadrons. They had a difference between their ion guns or standard lasers. Lasers would be extremely effective at dealing with the ship once its shields were down, and distortion slash ion guns were very, very quick at taking shields out. So if you doubled up, if you had a TIE Defender or a TIE Interceptor and another fighter, or if you're on the New Republic side, which we don't talk about, <laughs> had ion guns, the person with ion would drop the shields, and the person with standard lasers would make the kill. And together, they'd kill a target significantly faster if, you know, as if they if they were to have standard lasers on both, they'd be a bit longer. Or if they were to have distortion on both, it would still take them longer. But having a mix of both would kill the target much quicker. It would just require some teamwork. I think this works. We don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to some of this gameplay with Star Citizen. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't take stuff that we know works and feels good and just put it in Star Citizen. Space shooters have been around since the 80s. I mean, 90s is when we had a big, you know, a big influx of them, but th this stuff's been solved 20, 30 years ago. So why should we be trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to penetrations? Look. This is just my opinion, but I just think that ballistics would feel great if they did really, really effective damage when ship's shields were down and the penetration and physicalized damage system that we should be getting at some point is really going to make that exciting and size of weapon and caliber of weapon and size of shielding and size of armor is going to matter. But I think the game would feel a lot better, especially now with cone fire and being able to basically apply damage even a little bit at long range. I like the idea of being able to keep yourself safe until your shields are totally down. 
like I said, less shields, but all stops versus larger shields, which basically are only effective within a certain percentage range. But don't take my opinion for it, guys. Go play master modes yourself. Go get involved with the training and the process of developing this flight system. Get your opinion and, you know, post it in Spectrum or here in the YouTube comments. But whatever you do, get involved. Get involved because whether you like it or not, this is one of the most critical stages of Star Citizen's development. You are going to be playing Star Citizen for the next 10 or maybe 20 years. Do you really want to say after that, that when it really came down to it, that you weren't there for when the game needed you the most? That's just my opinion, though. Guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. These are just my thoughts. Please post your comments down in the YouTube section or go to Spectrum and risk putting your opinion out to the world. Whatever you do, get involved. And thank you so much, guys, for watching with me. Also, if you haven't had a chance to check out my latest video called my most important video, please consider taking a look, guys. I think it really is very important. Thank you so much, guys, for all the love and support. I'll see you out there. My name is Avenger1, and I'll see you next time.